OpenAI recently announced their new model, GPT-40. It's a natively multimodal model, and today we're going to be discussing seven use cases that are opened up by the model's new capabilities. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Yesterday was OpenAI's big spring update, and while we didn't get GPT-4.5 or GPT-5 in name, or the rumored search engine, what we got was a truly natively multimodal model that can take visual, audio, video, or text inputs and output in any of those formats without going through a conversion process. Yesterday, the discussion was all about why I think this is more significant than people might be giving it credit for, to say nothing of the fact that this model is now available for free to everyone, But today we're going to talk about what it's actually useful for. Quick note on that front, at this stage, GPT-4.0, the model, is available in ChatGPT, but the new voice and vision inputs as well as the desktop app are not yet available. I've seen there be some confusion about this, particularly as people try to use the voice inputs on the existing mobile app to recreate what they saw in these demo videos without success. So given that, the caveat for all of this is, of course, that we're just using what OpenAI has provided us for demos, and it's always worth being at least a shade skeptical of what's cherry-picked for presentation as part of a marketing site. But let's talk now about these use cases. The first use case we're going to discuss is marketing graphics with words. Now, I'm saying marketing graphics to put a department around it, but really, anytime you need to generate images in a business context that have words, GPT-40 is by far, it seems, the most advanced tool you have. What was interesting about the OpenAI announcement is that they didn't even announce a lot of the things that we're going to discuss, and this is a great example. You can see in their exploration of capabilities that they show off how precise the language on text ability is getting. For example, on the screen they share an input, a first-person view of a robot typewriting the following journal entries. The text is supposed to be, Yo, so like, I can see now? Caught the sunrise and it was insane. Colors everywhere. Kind of makes you wonder, like, what even is reality? The prompt continues, the text is large, legible, and clear. The robot's hands type on the typewriter. The output is exactly that, with the text looking exactly like described. There's even a version where they rip the paper in half, with the text remaining. To get a sense of how this could be useful for marketing, let's look at another example they give, poster creation for the movie Detective. First, they provide two pictures of people that they're going to want on the poster, and then from there they prompt, the final poster of the movie Detective. This features two large faces of Alex and Gabe, who are the people from those photos above. Alex on the left is depicted in a thoughtful pose with a hint of introspection in his eyes. Gabe on the right has a slightly wearied expression, possibly reflecting the challenges their characters face in the film. The names Alex Nichol and Gabriel Go are featured above their heads. The tagline for this dark and greedy movie is searching for answers is shown at the bottom. Now it's worth noting with this output, given how much is going on, the text isn't perfect, but it's getting a heck of a lot closer. And this level of precision control is absolutely going to open up some new possibilities. Staying in this marketing theme, Another one of OpenAI's explorations of capabilities is brand placement. They share two parts of the input. The first is the OpenAI logo. The second is a coaster with no branding that they describe. Their final prompt is, here we've etched the OpenAI logo onto the coaster. A coaster where the top is wooden and the bottom is marble. The OpenAI logo is etched into the middle of the wooden part. On the marble part, the word OpenAI is etched in the OpenAI font. And this output looks pretty perfect. Product photography is an area that is getting a ton of tools and toys lately. But this ability to actually map words and logos onto a particular object is definitely a phase shift in those capabilities. Next up, we move to a use case that is incredibly important for things like games and comics and storytelling, but also can be useful even in a corporate setting, and that is consistent characters. It's extremely hard to get image generators to output the same character in multiple contexts and poses. In the past, I've developed custom GPTs to help with this, although that's been more about consistent style, And there are dedicated tools like Scenario that have specifically developed models for just this. Now, this is one that I most want to see in practice versus just trust their cherry-picked example. But the example that OpenAI gives shows a cartoon mailwoman who is then placed in a variety of contexts, including actually delivering the mail, running away from a dog that's chasing her, tripping as that dog chases her, realizing the dog was a nice dog, and then driving away. If the updated DALI powered by GPT-40 really can do this this easily, it's going to be at the risk of using a word that is way overused in our space, a game changer. From there, we move to capabilities that are shown off in demo videos. The first use case, which was actually part of the presentation we got with the announcement video, is tutoring. In that announcement video, the example was GPT-40 with voice, helping someone work through a linear equation. OpenAI invited myself and my son Imran here Uh, to try out some of their new technology. And so we're curious about how good it might be at tutoring someone in math on Khan Academy. So let's get it started. It's loading up. All right, make sure we can see our screen. Actually, in in this form, I can't... 
I'm here with my son, and I'd love you to tutor him on this math problem, but don't give him the answer. You can ask questions and nudge him in the right direction, but I really want to make sure he understands it himself. And he's here in the room, so you can talk to him directly. Of course. I'd be happy to help. Let's look at the problem together. Can you first identify which sides of the triangle are the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse relative to angle alpha? All right. So I'm pretty sure this is the angle alpha right here, right? Fact. Correct. Correct. Yes. Now, looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, Remember yeah, the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think, I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle alpha. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and is directly opposite the right angle. So this is very similar to what we saw in that presentation. And basically the big update here is the ability to combine seeing what's on the screen and voice to interact with the user of that screen. A somewhat related use case is coaching, or in this case, interview prep. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Rocky. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm awesome. Listen, I got some huge news. Oh, do tell. I'm all ears. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI? Huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky, <laughs> you definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Your well, enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? Oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you... Now, obviously, this case was showing off more of the vision capabilities, but you can imagine how this would be useful for actual discussion and verbal interactions as well. Next up, we have customer service. Hey, yo, this is Joe. I'm going to connect you to Acme Telco now. The new iPhone they sent me isn't working. I want you to, I want you to get them to send me a replacement device. Can you take care of this for me? Count on me, Joe. I got this. Ring, ring. Hey, Joe. This is Jamie from Acme Telco. How can I help you out today? Hi there. I'm calling on behalf of Joe, who recently received a new iPhone from Acme Telco. But... I'm... Oh, got it. When did Joe receive the new iPhone? The iPhone was delivered two days ago. Cool. I'm not going to show the whole thing here, but you get the idea. This is actually showing off two sides of a customer service capability. On the one side is the sort of personal assistant replacement, where the AI is calling on someone's behalf and trying to resolve a problem. But then on the flip side, we also have the AI acting as the customer service representative, getting the information it needs to potentially deal with the issue. It's been clear for some time that customer service is one of the areas that is most likely to be impacted in the extreme by generative AI. And this certainly seems to validate that as well. Our next use case is meeting summarization, but really it should probably be better described as meeting engagement, meeting transformation. The example that OpenAI gives shows ChatGPT actually interacting as part of the meeting. How about you, Ola? Yeah, my name is Ola. I think cats are better because they're more affordable, they're more quiet, they're more independent, and they live longer. Interesting points. Sounds like we've got a classic dogs versus cats debate here. I can see the appeal of both. Dogs are super loyal and great companions. Now, while this example is obviously just meant for dramatizing what can happen here, where you can imagine this being useful is ChatGPT that actually has relevant information from your company sitting in the meeting so that you can ask it questions as you're trying to figure something out. So for example, imagine that you're having a strategic conversation about marketing prioritization or customer care. ChatGPT could be used to inform that discussion with real-time recall of key information from your company. I think this one's going to take a little bit more imagination, but I think that office professionals are going to find really interesting use cases here pretty quickly, especially again when ChatGPT has access to actual information about the company. So there you have it. Those are seven use cases for GPT-40. Caveat again is that we don't know exactly how this will work until everyone gets their hands on the full complete tool set, but I for one am pretty excited to explore. 
That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.